Hey guys, Somebody's Gun here. Today we're going to be talking about moving zones. I'm going to try and help you guys understand them, try and understand what dead side is, how it becomes congested, areas you want to avoid, areas you want to attack, and just generally how they work. So, hope you guys enjoy the video. Let's dive right into it. I'm going to start throwing some numbers and some geometry at you guys, so I hope you enjoy it. Moving zones really start with 5th or 50-50 zone because this determines how zone is going to play from here on out. So let's take a look and see how the zones typically play out. I'll show you a, a perfect example if we lived in a perfect world and then take you into an example of what it's really like in these moving zones. So we'll start with 6th zone, that is the first moving. To start with, we need to understand that each moving zone gets smaller and smaller. So that means the players are going to get funneled into smaller positions, causing congestion. The only place that isn't going to get smaller and smaller is above and below, right? There's no elevation change in the zone. It's a cylinder that goes straight up and down. So you have as much space up and down, but the sides begin to close in on you. This creates a funnel process and then based on where players are lined up, it will create congested and dead areas of these moving zones. So let's look at a perfect example. Here we can see the green spots if fifth zone was perfectly distributed would be less congested than the middle obviously because players are being funneled in, the zone's getting smaller and they're being forced into a smaller position. Zone is rarely if ever perfect though, so 50-50 zone starts half in zone, half outside in the storm. And typically no players wind up going to that half that is in the storm, so there's always a con constant congested side on the storm side. And this is how zones will typically play out and you can use this information to your advantage. The red or northern area of zone is going to be super congested while the southern side of zone is going to be much less congested. And we can see this play out in game as most of the players are rotating on this northern side, less on this southern side, and it's a much freer rotate, much less congested and contested, which will allow you to save and use less mats. Now, occasionally you do have players using bouncers, which will alter how this plays out but this is exactly the same for every single moving zone if you can find the congested side and then move to the dead side that will help you rotate with fewer materials in general you should look to get to the front side of zone or the left or right side of moving zones this will help you rotate freer and avoid the congestion because Almost always, there is going to be chaos at the center of the zone. If you're on the front side, you get to avoid that, but the later you rotate, the more time you allow players to catch up to you and then get into that center congested chaos, which is the center of these moving zones. Now you can see when zone pulls back though, Grabbing the edges of these is so key because you can rotate with one side open and not have to worry about players coming in from that direction. If they do, they're tanking storm damage and I don't even know why the heck they would be there. So grab the sides of these zones, especially as they move quickly to put yourselves in better positions for these rotations. Now we haven't talked about what happens when zone pulls back over old builds. What you need to do in these situations is claim everything. You never know whose old builds you're going to go back into and where they are in the map. Now, you also can use your AR in order to fire ahead and break builds before they even come into the zone, as well as using, again, the left and right sides of zone to minimize the number of builds that you need. We talked about zones going over a flat area and looking at the front and sides of the zone, but what happens at the back in the middle? I've said it's congested, but this will show us what really happens in zone when we're going up elevation, as well as just generally what's going on in the backside and the middle of zone. Players on the backside or middle of zone are not in the best position. The backside especially is typically where players will be the most shambles and should be easy elims if you can find angles through these builds. That's why claiming space is important so that way you can look back and find these players. 
if we take a second to stop and look, we can see that there's so many more players on this backside and center of zone than there is on the left and right side and the front side. So if you want easier rotations, I'm trying to nail it in your head. Go towards the front side and the edges of the zone. Being on the front side allows you to control your own movement as opposed to trying to adapt to what other players and their builds have forced you into. Especially when going up and down elevation, it is so much easier to rotate when you don't have to follow someone else's path. You control your own space, your own tarps, your own tunnels, and this will give you a freer rotate during these zones, especially when you're going up mountains or in this example, the Colosseum walls that are going to prevent you from going through them. Zones don't only close horizontally, but they also compress vertically. And this is due to the players and not any aspect of the storm. Players over time will force themselves into less layers. Starting in 5th zone, we could have anywhere from 10 to 15 different layers that players are boxed up on. As zones move, those layers quickly compress to maybe 3 to 5 over the last few zones, and this causes more chaos and more congestion. A good height team will also force the lobby down faster and compress the zone vertically even more. So we can see in this example, the zone went over the Coliseum, over into open space, and we go from six to eight layers in second moving zone to probably three to five in these final closing zones. Again, it's up to the height team. They really do control the entirety of the zone, and the more pressure they put on from up top is going to lead to fewer number of layers in these zones. All right, so let's wrap this up real quick. Moving zone starts with 5th zone, at least from a conceptual perspective. The congested side of 5th zone, aka the half that starts in the zone, is always going to be congested, whereas the half that starts in the storm is not going to be congested. From there, then we can understand where most players are going to be, and typically, if not always, the center of the zone is going to be the most congested just by the funnel process that happens. The edges are going to be open, and zone is going to shrink both horizontally and vertically over time. Horizontally is a mechanic based on the size of the zone. Vertically is based on the players and pressure coming from up top. And this also depends on different heights as well as elevation changes. So that's what we wanted to cover. And I hope that was clear within this video. If not, let me know in the comments. I'll try and clear it up for you. I want to thank you guys for watching. We will talk about different things like rotating moving zones as well as getting frags or refreshes in them. But that's a whole different topic. This was mostly focused on the con conceptual piece of the moving zones and the mechanic itself. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to throw a like and subscribe on my channel. Appreciate it. I'll see you guys next time.